On this episode, we're going to take a table of data and talk about how to format it into something more readable, presentable, while clearly displaying a few insights. So stay tuned. Be sure to hit the website in the description to check out all the sample workbooks and code. I want to talk about some formatting ideas for tables this episode. You don't have to follow these to a T, but see what applies to your, your data based on the goals of what you want to do with your table. The first thing I do is buffer a little space from the edges. I like to make that space the same. The way I do that is with the tooltip and looking at the pixel count as I resize. Then I like to make the rows a little bit taller to let the text get a bit of space between each row. If the goal is to show a lot of data, you may want to skip this part. But most of the time I like to vertical align center the data and give a little more breathing room so I can see each row on its own well. And then I'll de-emphasize the text a little bit here by making it a slightly lighter gray. And then I'll bold the headers so they stand out a little bit. And then I'll select the data and put a border on it that's just all sides so it kind of looks like the grid. And then I'll go and turn off the grid. And that gives it a nice look where you have borders around the data and then empty space is just empty white. Then I'll go through and double check the padding on the columns to be sure everything looks good. If I have narrow data, I'll try to rename the column so the header is also a little bit more narrow. And then I might take the time to center align some of them if it makes sense and, and looks good. And where possible, I'll make them the exact same width so they look a little more uniform uh, as well. And in this particular data set, there are two halves. There's kind of the customer information, the buyer, and then there's the item information. And so let's separate those visually. We'll do that with a background fill on the items. We'll also insert a column between them to give them a little white space. Just to note, all this data is in a control T table in Excel, which is the table object, which has some smarts like banding and growing formulas and whatnot. So when we insert that column, it actually gives us another column in that table, and we have to kind of format away the look of that column so it can look like a, a gap instead. But because it's all in one table object still, all the conditional formatting and formulas that fill down will, will still automatically fill down when new rows are added. So let's say we wanted to add emphasis to the paid column where we call out everybody who hasn't paid us yet. We can just apply a simple equals to CF that where the answer is no, and then we highlight it uh, with red. It has a default color there. I prefer to have a little darker background with a lighter text on it. So I'll pick a dark red with a white font. But the color now is so far away from the buyer name that we could use some banding and highlight the whole row or highlight the, the name itself. Let's add a little sliver there that indicates uh, if the paid is no uh, next to the buyer name. So you can see at the start of the row as well. So we're going to make a CF in that little sliver column of B. We're going to do the same sort of no check. We're going to change the dollar signs to lock the column, but not the row, so that it goes down correctly. And we'll just do the same equals no and make that return true. And then just set the cell format background to that nice uh, dark red. And this will add a little nice dynamic indicator next to the buyer name uh, if they haven't paid without us needing to apply banding to the whole row. There's nothing wrong with banding. Uh, you can use it if you like it. This is just an alternative to it. Because the slivers are touching each other, I'm going to add a little white border between them so they look like they're little individual uh, signals that turn on and off. Next, let's say we want to add a little more emphasis to the total column. Lots of ways to do this, but I'm going to choose uh, data bars. And so I duplicate the total column, and then I basically check a box called show bar only. And then that removes the numbers, and you can kind of see the bars sort of coming out of the totals themselves. This change looks good. looks like it's coming out of the table and does add a lot of emphasis to the bigger numbers. I think this table is looking a lot better now with some formatting than not. So let's try adding a new row and see if everything fills down correctly. And what you'll notice right away is a lot of the colors and stuff fill down, the formula filled down, but that bottom border is is missing. It's a little goofy thing with tables every now and then. The way I fix this is by adding a conditional formatting that just looks underneath a column that's supposed to have data all the time. So if the row below me is empty, then make my bottom border visible. I do that for the buyer and the item side so that that gap in between doesn't get a bottom border as well. And then if we go and test adding another a row, you'll see that the bottom border comes in and everything looks great. This isn't meant to be the definitive guide to table formatting. It's meant to show you a bunch of ideas and things that I enjoy doing in a lot of my tables uh, so that you can take some of that and uh, apply to yours. Let me know if you liked any of these formatting tips. And if there's formatting tips you use uh, for your tables, I'd love to, to hear about them too. Please give me a like and a sub. Mm -hmm.